Grace and peace to you today, my brothers and sisters. This is the day that the Lord God has made, and we shall choose to rejoice and be exceedingly glad. On behalf of myself, the entire Connections family, and Lady Johnson, we greet you in divine love. There is no other place that I would rather be than to be with you right now. I desperately wish and just hope for the day that we can come back together to the sanctuary and worship to worship God together. But until that time, we have to make sure that we're being safe and we're being proactive with all of our measurements and protocols. If you will, start sharing this video right now. We're believing God that something will be said today, a song will be sung that will move your entire heart. Let me say thank you to all of you that came out on this past Tuesday this past Tuesday for our bi-weekly food distribution. It was an awesome and amazing opportunity. Also, I have to thank all of you that came out on this past Sunday for our first Sunday Park and Pray service. We had an amazing time. Not only did we have amazing time in worship, but we also had a wonderful community festival after worship service. So that was exciting. That was amazing. I want you to be uh, very uh, much aware of what's happening in the life of the church. Start Starting in October, starting in October, we will resume our midweek services in person. We're gradually going back into uh, the process of being with one another. So on Tuesday nights, we will be in the sanctuary in Lake Wells. And on Wednesday night will be our small groups in Tampa. So start spreading the word. Come October, we will be back in the house of God just for midweek services, not Sundays yet. We're still virtual on Sundays, but our midweek services will be uh, in the house of God. So we want you to be very mindful of that. Listen, be mindful of all of our announcements, and you will hear about them throughout the course of the week. But right now, we want to get into the Word of God, and we want to get into praise and worship. Right now, Minister Tremaine Toons Campbell is coming to bless us, and then I'll be back with the Word. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. And let the church say amen again. Wherever you are, wherever you're watching us, wherever you're listening, why don't you start now clapping your hands and giving God praise. The word of God says clap your hands, all you people, and shout to God with the voice of triumph. We begin to magnify the Lord. We begin to honor the Lord. We begin to celebrate God. We begin to allow God. We give him the greatest praise, which is hallelujah. There is nothing higher than him. There is no one higher than him. Oh, God, we thank you. We magnify you. We honor you. We glorify you. He's a good God. Let me say that again. He's a good God. On your good days, he's a great God. Listen, right where you are, just take about 60 seconds to lift your hands and open your mouth and give God the fruit of your lips. What do you mean, Pastor? What do you mean, give him the fruit of my lips? That means the sweetness of your voice. Something that cannot be compared with any other sound. There is no one that can replicate the sound that God has placed in you. And so now lift up your voice and begin to magnify God because I can't tell God thank you for you. I can't bless it for you. You have to do it for yourself. Do it now. Do it now. Thank you for life. Thank you for health. Thank you for strength. Thank you for another day. It's another day's journey and I'm so glad. We remember the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ of what he's done for us on Calvary's cross. On the night in which he was betrayed, he took unleavened bread, he broke it, he blessed it, and gave it. Because he is omniscient, he would know he knew what was going to happen to him. He knew that his body will be broken. He knew that his skin will be devoured. But he said, take and eat all of it, 
for this is my body that is broken for you. Shall we eat together? His blood that was shed for you on Calvary's cross. The hymn writer says it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives us strength from day to day. Never. It will never, hey, it will never lose its power. Shall we drink together? Hallelujah. Just have fellowship in your home. And remember what God has done for you. Just clap your hands right there and listen. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for peace. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you, God, for everything. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And we magnify you as we prepare to go higher in praise and worship in your home. Why don't you just go in with us? Amen. As we exalt the name of God. Hallelujah. Clap your hands now as we go forward in worship with Minister Tremaine Toons Campbell. God bless you. Clap your hands. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. For so many sins today that the Lord has made me all over to us, all over the world. Hallelujah. Uplift your voices wherever you are, wherever you may be this morning. Clap your hands. All ye people. Come on, come on, clap on. Yes, and you don't have to be in an actual church setting to clap your hands. You don't have to be in an actual church setting to give God praise to salute your God. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Those of you that know it this morning, sing along with me. Hallelujah. We come together and pray for all the great praise. Yes, Lord, we love you. We bless your name, Jesus.
Yeah. <laughs> 
Lord, you've been, let's lift it up, so good. 
that's a, good, a great place to clap your hands and give God glory. Come on, right where you are, right where you're watching and listening. That's a great place for you to clap your hands and give God praise. If you know God has been good to you, I don't hear you saying nothing. If you know God has been good to you, come on, clap your hands and open your mouth. You've been so good. There ought to be a sound in your house. There ought to be a sound in your car. Nobody knows what you've been through. Nobody knows the doors that God has opened for you. The ways that he's made for you. Let the redeem of the Lord. that you will rest upon us. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh in this place today. For God, you are the potter and we are the clay. Mold us and shape us, have thine own way. For we need to hear from you. We need a word from you. If we don't hear from you, what will we do? We're wanting you more and more each day. Show us your perfect way. Now, God, you've been with us in singing. Be with us in this sermon. You've been with us in worship. Be with us in the word. You've been with us in praise. Be with us in preaching. Hide us behind the very shadow of the cross, we do pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap your hands one more time right where you are. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Grab your Bibles and go with me to the Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 6. Thank God for Mother Campbell for blessing us this morning as always. And we praise God for her. The Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 6. And we want our scripture lesson to begin with verse 13. We've been in a series of messages entitled, Lord, Teach Me How to Pray. And this is week six. <laughs> Some of you are saying, Pastor, we want you to preach on something else. I can't until I know that you got it. So at least two more weeks of Lord teach us how to pray as we walk through the word of God and how God navigates us to pray effectively in him. 
It reads in this way from Matthew chapter 6, verse 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let me just stop there. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. If someone is near you, just say, Lord, teach us how to pray. My mind was very reflective on this past Friday when our world, our country in particular, mm -hmm. celebrated or remembered, rather, let me say that, remembered what happened on September the 11th, 2001. 19 years ago, Thousands of lives were lost when a plane went into the Twin Tower in New York City. At that moment in time, we thought that we would never see anything like that again. At that time, it brought our nation to its face in prayer. Persons who hadn't prayed in a long time got on their knees and prayed. Subsequently, in the years that will come, one of the questions that was asked and asked every 9-11 is, where were you when you got the news of what happened in New York? I would never forget that I was a freshman that year at Warner Southern College. We were sitting in chapel in worship. Around 9.45, we received the word of this horrific act that took place on American soil. 19 years later, we're still grieving, not just for those in whom perished in New York, but we're grieving over where our country is today. We're grieving. Stay with me for a minute. In this polarizing culture, our eyes have been opened. There are two things that I can say about the climate of today that will help us understand the navigation of where the Lord will lead us today. Is that there are two things that have changed and come into being. And there is one thing that is still yet a non-negotiable. On Friday, as I was reflecting about 9-11, it brought me to this place to where the pandemic has brought us to a familiar place to remember and reflect on who we really are. Things will never be the same again after this pandemic. If you look around, things are different everywhere you go. Everywhere you go, somewhere is where someone is wearing a mask. Everywhere you go, someone is wearing gloves. There is not full occupancy in the restaurants that we used to frequent. There is not full occupancy in the beauty salons and the hair shops in which we go to every week or the nail salons. There uh, is not full occupancy and it looks different because of the state in which we're in. So now we begin to reflect on how the world used to be before the pandemic. That's what we did on 9-11. We thought about how the world was and America was before 9-11. But now we're thinking about how the world and our country will be after the pandemic. The second thing that I want to bring to you as we jump into the text today is as we're looking at the pandemic, we also must look at politics. We must look at politics because politics is now driving the course of our culture. It seems to be there is anarchy in our culture that there is black against whites. It seems to be that there is Democrats against Republicans, rich and poor, those who have and those who have not. And there seems to be a level of division in our country. But not only is there a level of division in our country, there seems
seems to be a level of division within our church because many pastors are now touting who is the most godly person that is running for office. And so now in this polarizing culture, as we're reflecting on what happened in 9-11, we remember what happened 19 years ago. But right now in today's time, right now on this Sunday morning, we cannot help but think how the world was changed because of the pandemic, how our country has been changed over the last six months because of this pandemic, how our country has been changed over the last four years because of our politics. But can I tell you, my brothers and sisters, no matter how much the country has changed because of the pandemic, no matter how much the country has changed because of politics, there is still something that has not changed. There's a third piece that I need to give you in my introduction that the pandemic has changed the country, politics has changed the country, but prayer is still the same. Did y'all hear what I just said? And the only way that we can get back to where we used to be is by having prayer. Somebody just shout prayer. Somebody type in the box prayer, prayer, prayer. We need God to open the portals of heaven and pour out blessings that we don't have room enough to receive. We need prayer that will go into the uttermost parts of the world and begin to save, deliver, and set free. We need prayer to heal bodies that's ridden with cancer. We need prayer that will bring somebody up out of the ICU. We need prayer that will strengthen and develop relationships. We need prayer that men and women of God will understand their purpose and their assignment and the anointing that is on their life. We don't need to focus on the pandemic. We don't need to focus on the politics, but we need to focus on prayer. Lord, teach us how to pray. What is prayer? My brothers and sisters, please understand here, it is direct communication with God. It is me talking to God and God talking back to me. That's what prayer is. Prayer is me talking to God and God talking back to me. We told you some weeks ago that the Greek word that we find here in the sixth chapter of Matthew is the word entousis and it means entering into the presence of God through the power of intercession. That's what that word means in Taosis. It means entering into the presence of God through the power of intercession. Please understand that when it's time for you to beseech the presence of God, you don't always have to go with somebody else interceding on your behalf, but there ought to be a moment and a time in your life when you usher yourself in the presence of God and you say, God, it is me, it is me, it is me, oh Lord standing in the need of prayer. Can I talk to somebody that is listening to me today that says I am in the need of prayer. My life is in turmoil. My finances are upside down. My relationships are shaky. But God I'm standing here not for my mother, not for my father, not for my brother, not for my sister, not for my son, not for my daughter. But God today I lay my hands on myself and say God I'm standing your presence and I need you so as we enter into the presence of God and as Jesus has taught them how to pray there has been five supplemental petitions that we've received leading up to this final petition as Jesus is teaching them how to pray. My brothers and sisters, petition number one, as we told you uh, some weeks ago, is hallowed or hallowed be thy name. That when we go to God in prayer, we must sanctify the name name of God. Hallowed. Hallowed would be thy name. That word hallowed means there is nothing higher. So that means that when I hallow the name of God there is nothing higher. So when I go to God in prayer I go already knowing that no one has the power that my God has. That is great revelation and not necessarily my brothers and sisters a deep theological place but that's great revelation to understand that the God that you serve there is no one higher than him. There is no one that can get lower than him. There is no one that can get around him because God is. Somebody say God is. God is. Hallowed will be thy name. God, what is your name? Your name is Yahweh. What is your name? Your name is El Shaddai. What is your name? Your name is Jehovah. What is your name? Your name is Shalom. What
What is your name? Your name is Rafa. What is your name? Your name is Shira. Please understand that the name of God fits into any place that you may be. And that means that God has all power to handle every problem that you have. So Jesus says, when you go to God in prayer, when you come to me in prayer, allowed will be thy name. Then he says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. I thank God, my brothers and sisters, that the rule of God is now active in the earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven as it is right here on earth. I'm basically saying that God, whatever your permissive will, whatever your supernatural will is in heaven, I'm praying that it will be here right now on earth. Please understand that whatever you shall bind on earth shall be in heaven and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So that means that when I begin to walk in the presence of God and God is leading me, God is now taking his supreme will of what he has already declared in the heavenlies and he make it earthly possible for you to see and to walk in faith. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Then petition number four is give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Now Jesus, he's talking to those that are part of the household of Israel that they understand what has already happened. They've heard, they've heard, and they've read in some form of fashion how God brought them from out of the wilderness and how God gave them manna and quail above, how God gave them manna every day, manna, that wafer that came from heaven that is translated to mean, what is this? And so when Jesus says, give us this day our daily bread, that means that whatever I need today, God shall supply. Let me say that again. Whatever I need today, God shall supply. Can I encourage you to lay your hands on yourself and say, whatever I need today, God shall supply. Because when I walk in the anointing of God, I'm believing that by the time I go to bed tonight, there's a prayer that's going to be answered. By the time I get to work tomorrow, a prayer will be answered. By the time I click on the app of my bank account, something will be different because God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. How dare you to sit there stressed out? How dare you sit there worrying? How dare you start walking the floor as if God hasn't made a way? Baby, I need you to go back and remember what God has already done. David said, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, where would I be? Go back to what he did last year. Go back to what he did five years ago. As a matter of fact, go back to what he did last week. And the same God that did that is the same God that will supply your needs today. So petition number four is give us this day our daily bread, that manna from heaven. What is this? Whatever you need, God shall supply. Yeah. Petition number five, and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. We dealt with that the last two weeks. Forgiveness and the power of overcoming struggles, the struggle of a grudge. Please understand, my brothers and sisters, that God will not hear your prayers if you're struggling with a grudge with somebody else. In order for you to be released and to have what God has for you, you need to let it go. You need to let it go. You need to let whatever that vexing thing is, you need to let it go. Because understand, there are some restrictive places in your life. There are some pockets in your life in which you cannot move forward because there is something in you that you're holding on to that you need to let go. And God says, I'm trying to bless you. I'm trying to open the doors. I'm trying to give you that daily bread that you need. But there is a blockage right there because of the grudge. There's a blockage right there because of something in your heart and your mind. Let it go and forgive us of our debt. As we forgive our debtors. And so today, my brothers and sisters, we come to the final petition here in this prayer. As, as Jesus is teaching his disciples, teach us how to pray. Petition number six says, lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Please understand, my brothers and sisters, that the original text doesn't just say evil, but it says the evil one. Now, let me say that again. Lead us not into temptation, but what? Deliver us from the evil one. My brothers and sisters, this Greek word here uh, for temptation, my brothers and sisters, is paramos. Paramos is a noun masculine voice that talks about trials and it talks about the affliction that we go through. And so the word of God basically says lead us not into trial. Lead us not into temptation. Lead us not into affliction. But watch this. But deliver us from the evil one. So now understand there will be some trials Trials that I go through. There will be some problems that I go through. There will be some ups and downs that I go through. But God, I need you to deliver me. Did you hear what I just yeah. said? Because you're going to go through some stuff. You're going to experience some things. But you're saying, God, bring me out of it. And that's something for somebody today. Because you're either in a storm, you're going through a storm, or you're coming out of something. But you're saying, God, all of the hell that I've been through, I need you to lead me away from the evil one. Lead me away from my trials. Lead me away from my afflictions. Lead us not into paramos. Watch this. But deliver us. But is a conjunction. It connects to paradoxes together to give you a clause that concludes a sentence. Lead us not into affliction. Lead us not into trials. Lead us not into temptation, but conjunction deliver us. Temptation comes my brothers and sisters suddenly. Temptation comes camouflage from something with weapons appropriate for your now season. Please understand that the devil is not bothering you based on something that you've already been through, but he has some fresh demons for you. He has some fresh devils for you. He got some fresh heartache for you. He has some fresh sickness for you. And this is what's happening because what's going to happen, that temptation is going to lead you into something that seems to be well. It seems to be good, but you got to pray and ask God for discernment. Did you hear what I just said? And the reason why Jesus can pray and say, deliver us from the evil one, because two chapters before this, he was in the wilderness for 40 days and for 40 nights being tempted by the enemy. But every time the devil came, the word of God came into Jesus and said, Thou shalt not live by bread alone. Thus saith the word of God. Every time the devil brings something up against you, you better open your mouth and say, Thus saith the Lord. Lead us not into temptation, my brothers and sisters. Please understand that God does not tempt us. He does not, he does not tempt us, but he will allow you to experience a part of a test. Please understand that God will not tempt us, but he will allow you to experience part of a test. That's the way that your testimony is intensified. That's how your shout comes and your dance comes because you're going through something. Is there anybody out there that say, I'm going through something right now and what I'm going through may not be what you're going through and what you're going through may not be what I'm going through, but I'm going through something. And the testimony is even though I'm going through through, I'm not going through by myself. Lead us not into temptation, but what? Deliver us from the evil one. Watch this, my brothers and sisters. When you're asking God to deliver you from the evil one, your deliverance starts with the word of God. Y'all got to talk to me out there. The deliverance from the evil one starts with the word of God. And how do we get that? I just told you in Matthew chapter 4, whenever the enemy comes, that's when the word of God goes back. That's when the word of God is appropriate for your life. When sickness come in your body, that's when you say God is a bomb in Gilead. He's a physician in the land. When your finances are out of place, that's when you say, he is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God that shall provide. When you cannot sleep at night, put the word of God back on your situation and say, he is Jehovah Shalom. He's the God of peace. He will be whatever you need to be my brothers and sisters I need you to get that I need you to have that place of testimony in your spirit to understand that as he brings you out of what you're going through please hear that my brothers and sisters as he brings you out of what you're going through he's taking you into something that's 
greater. I need somebody to holler back at me and shout greater. This is a great moment for you to prophesy over your life. This is a great moment for you to give God glory and praise because there is something greater on the inside of you. I didn't go through what I went through not to have glory on the other side. I did not shed the tears that I have not to come out giving God glory. There is something greater on the inside of me. There's businesses in you. There is healing in you. There are streams of income in you. There is something great in you. Look at somebody in your house and say greater, 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 greater. I'm done here. Watch this. Greater. The confession is, my brothers and sisters, watch this. This is the confession that I can only come out of something that I recognize that I'm in. I'm done here. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Watch this. It did not say that we would not have temptation. God does not tempt us, but the enemy was. Now, please, we'll understand, my brothers and sisters. God, as he allows you to go into something, you got to believe in your spirit that there is something greater on the other side of what I've been through. There is something that God is trying to teach me. There is something that God wants me to learn. There is something that God wants me to have. And I thank God for my previous experience. Can I close it here, y'all? I thank God for what I've already been through. Because what I've already been through has taught me enough to understand weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. I've been through enough to where I have the word on the inside of me that says I can lift up my eyes unto the hills from which come in my head.
with anything that you're wrestling with the old saints used to say he's a habit breaker he's a mind regulator whatever you're going through he can and he will right in your home would you lift your hands and say God lead us not into temptation but deliver us today is a day of deliverance for somebody that you refuse to live a life that is mediocre any longer. Today is the day. I'm done with it. I'm done, I'm done with mediocrity. I'm done with now living my best. I know the pandemic is crazy. I know that politics are crazy. But prayer is still the same. Everything is changing. But prayer is still the same. I don't know how it happened. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know when, but pray, Lord, teach me how to pray to get on my face and talk to you. Pray. Pray over my children. Pray over the church. Pray over our leaders. Pray over our finances. Pray over our community. Pray over those who are not saved yet. Pray. Prayer, 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 the power of prayer. Come on, just lift your hands and just start worshiping in your home and say, God, deliver me. Whatever that is, whatever that is, bring me out of it. I declare this shall not be your struggle any longer. For I'm letting it go. I'm walking in freedom. I'm walking in peace. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go right now. Let it go. 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 Was the word of God a blessing to you today? 
my God, I had to come back into my office and just make sure that we shared this message with you. How important it is to pray. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now listen, take this word with you and run with it. Take this word with you and run with it because there is something that's going to happen in your life this week that you're going to need God to bring you from out of the clutches of what the enemy is trying to bring you in. Do you hear what I'm saying? So God, help me come out. Bring me out so that I may be the man of God and the woman of God that you desire for me to be. Listen, I need you to do two things. Number one, share this video. Share this video. Share this video that someone else may hear how God has blessed you. Share this with your community. Share this in a group. Share it to a page and let somebody hear how God is blessing us through the power of prayer. Number two, we ask that you sow into this ministry. It is because of your weekly contributions that we continue to serve the community. We can continue to do what we're doing to be known as Connections Community Church. Uh, as you know, many of you know, most of our budget is allocated around the mission work that we do. Uh, and we're so thankful that those of you who continue to give week after week, we thank you for that. There are so many ways that you can give. Text to give right now. The information is on your screen. The information is on your screen. Our church website, you can go there to give. Givelify the app, you can do it there. Whatever your pleasure is, so today. We depend on what you give and we're believing and we're trusting God that amazing things will happen because of your obedience. So the word of God says it's better to give than to sacrifice. So we're praising God for that. Amen. So thank you for sowing and thank you for sharing. Let's receive the benediction this week. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Him Henceforth and forevermore. Listen, we'll see you Tuesday night, but don't forget, you shall win in every area of your life. See you Tuesday night. Be blessed.